So this afternoon, the battle of the M4. Nigel Pearson's Bristol City travel to Berkshire to take up arms with Paul Lintz's Reading side, who seem much transformed under his stewardship. After our midweek win at the Hawthorns, the spring is certainly back in the step of our boys in red. A momentum I'm sure they hope to build on today and heading towards the international break. So then, to the select car leasing stadium, home of the Royals, who failed to secure even a point in their last three outings. Whatever today brings, you can sure we'll be there every step of the way. Hello and welcome to Robins TV, live from our studio here at Ashton Gate in BS3, following the fortunes of Nigel Pearson's Bristol City as they travel to the Select Car Leasing Stadium. Now there's a mouthful. Uh, joining me for this one is uh, a relatively new guest to, to Robins TV, but certainly not a new face to Bristol City. Uh, James, welcome. First of all, um, let me introduce you. So you are, and let me get this right, uh, Youth Development Manager for Bristol City Women, is that That's right? That's correct. Yeah. Excellent. That's okay, well, well, first of all, welcome. Uh, congratulations on your current successes with Bristol City Women. It's a fantastic time to be involved in that setup. It is, yeah, it's really exciting. I think from the, the younger age groups all the way through to obviously Lauren's first team, it's, it's a really good place to be at the moment. And I think the successes are following kind of week after week, which is, which is great. And this isn't like your first involvement with this setup either, because you were here originally and then you went away for a bit and now you've come back and you were even yeah. head coach in an interim sort of section. So this is, you know, no stranger to this setup, are you? No, that's it. I, I was here 2014 to 2019. Um, I then left to take up a couple of other roles w within international football and had the opportunity of coming back last October. So I think it was last week, 12 months was kind of the 12 month anniversary of of kind of coming back so um, there's been a lot of work we've done in the last 12 months but yeah you know it's a club that I've been been involved with for quite some time in total. Love the way by the way he drops in oh just a, an international setup because you, you were working with Wales weren't you? Yeah I worked with the the Wales women's national teams at 17s, 19s and senior levels and then I took a role um, beginning of 2021 out in Trinidad and Tobago as head coach of their national team so yeah I've managed to um, to do a little bit of traveling um, and then you know back to back to the club where it's kind of all started really and with it you've brought huge successes what do you put that success down to at the moment i think the staff group you know from from top to bottom within the club you know we're, we're really lucky with the the people that we have and i think that's the first and foremost is having the right people in the door and then you know giving them the power and the opportunities to go and to do what they're good at and you know i think that's happening with lauren's first team and as i said all the way down to our under 12s it's you know it's a really exciting place and um, yes, exciting to see what the future has to bring for us. Well, we're very pleased with that with that success and long may it continue on to today. And uh, as with all that experience, you'll be no stranger to the pressures of, of football management. And of course, coming off the back of a win, uh, a slight spring in the step. Does that make things easier for Nigel Pearson's men, do you think? Yeah, I think so. I think, you know, wins breed confidence. And, you know, football is, is, is really kind of governed by your confidence levels. And, you know, it's now today, can they replicate what they've done in midweek and, and try and get a second, you know, second victory on the bounce? And the Royals going through a bit of a tricky patch at the moment. Much improved since last season. Paul Lynch seems to have made a real difference, but no points in their last three. So how can we capitalise on that today? I think it's it's mainly about us. And I think that's what we have to focus on today is, you know, taking our positives out of the game we've had in midweek. And, you know, obviously your opposition analysis and the work that you'll do around who you're playing on a given game is is key to your preparation. But I think ultimately we've just got to take that bounce out of the midweek into, into today's game. OK, look forward to more chat with James on the way very shortly indeed. First of all, who has been selected for the big battle in Berkshire? The man in the know, it's Bristol City's lead commentator, Toby Osborne. Thank you very much. Uh, Downsy, let's have a look then at the sides that will go head to head today. Starting with Reading, Paul Lintz makes two changes to the team who gave up a two-goal lead to lose against Swansea during the week. The first change sees Lucas Zhao frequently on the score sheet against the Reds, of course, particularly during his time with the Owls. He replaces Fornar uh, as part of a front three that includes the manager's son, Tom Ince, and Matey, who had strong words about his underperforming side after the Swansea defeat. The other switch comes in the back three. Baba 
Rahman replaces Yaya Dom. In midfield, the uh, very recognisable Republic of Ireland international Jeff Hendrick starts today. He's on loan from Newcastle this season. He'll be hoping to make his mark this afternoon. And a very strong bench with some familiar names as well for the Royals. Andy Carroll wearing shirt number two. 35-year-old Shane Long, who returned to his second spell at the club during the summer. And then Ovi Ajaria as well, the former Liverpool man who has struggled to capture the attention of Paul Ince since he joined the club on a permanent basis. As for Bristol City, well, they name an unchanged side. And why not, as they look to make it back-to-back -back wins? So, Max O'Leary keeps his place in goal. Praise for his goalkeeping from set pieces at the Hawthorns. 13 corners for West Brom the other night. Well dealt with by that back three, which remains the same. Atkinson, Viner, close, make up the three. Joe Williams made the league team of the week as well. Grabbed his goal, his first in the red of Bristol City. He'll start another game in succession from the off. His form proving a real boost for the Reds. Naki Wells' partner, Semenyo, again. He'll be looking to add his eighth goal to his tally this afternoon as well. Another very experienced bench. The only switch sees Callas drop out for Cam Pring. Nigel Pearson insistent that he isn't after a reaction from Andy Vyman. Another rest today for the Austrian, who prior to the Reading game uh, hadn't scored or assisted in, in eight games in total. Lots of experience in there as well with Chris Martin and Andy King. So unchanged Downsy. And one of the more pleasing elements of that, as I mentioned, Joe Williams starting yet another game for Bristol City. Great stuff. Thank you very much, Toby. Unchanged, I guess, is great testament to a team that have done well. And if that's your selection headache, then all good. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it, you, you need to take your previous game's results and performances. And, you know, obviously the manager is very happy with what he's seen in, in the prior game. Um, and I think it's a real good show of confidence towards those players that have retained their places. Yeah, I think, you know, to, to be able to, to do that, it's something that Bristol City haven't always you know, been able to do and to, to perhaps have that uh, confidence. Do you think the players then take some sort of solace from that also? Yeah, I think so. I think a settled team helps everybody. Um, it's, you know, you, you strike up playing relationships with, you know, the player in front of you or the player to the side of you. And I think it just, just makes it a little bit easier to get that continuity going. And again, as I said, on the back of a, of a, a confidence boosting win, that's, that's also going to help as well. And you look at the bench, you look at how strong the bench is, um, and you know, uh, incredible in terms of any potential changes there may have to be. You, you sort of look at that and go, yeah, actually, do you know what? Maybe we can get all three points today. Yeah, you know, the the, the bench, as you said, and the squad overall is a, is a really really strong one. So you know, it's um, there will be changes there if Nigel feels he needs to make changes. I'm sure there'll be plenty of options on the bench for him to be able to go ahead and do that. Let's just hope none of them walk off down the end of the tunnel before the full-time whistle. Yeah, I'm sure they won't. <laughs> uh, good stuff. Thank you very much, James. You're watching Robins TV. Hello, it's Downsy and James Thomas here, ahead of the clash between Bristol City and Reading in the Sky Bet Championship. Right then, time to revel in that historic win at the Hawthorns. For the first time in 29 years, the Robins came away with all three points. Let's take a look. Can they give those travelling fans a real treat to head back down the M5 with... A reward for all of their loyalty following this side through thick and thin. A lively start for Bristol City. A first sighting now of Alex Scott in that more advanced role. Slides it into Semenyo. Early opportunity maybe here. Deflection corner. and an early corner. David Button in the first 11. Rob Atkinson, three goals so far this season for him. Could there be another? Forced away by Martin Kelly. And eventually the baggies scramble the ball clear. Joe Williams forced all the way back to Max O'Leary. Decision that. Who launches it long, looking for Naki Wells, who's onside here. Can he open the score oh. and gets his feet in a tangle? And the referee says no penalty. Great vision for Max. Great vision to play that. You can see the uh, frustration on Wells' face. He knew that was a golden moment for him. One back though by Williams, who's made a good start to this game. First time pass into Great the ball. path of Naki Wells. Semenyo's in the box. Oh, cut it back. Williams was there lurking on the edge. Pulled back again by De Silva. Yes. Poked home. Joe Williams. First goal of the season for him. And Bristol City break the deadlock at the Hawthorns. Thought he missed the opportunity there when he hadn't cut it back.
West Brom have had all the pressure the last 10 minutes or so. But it was Joe Williams that started off that attack, that move. He won the ball back in midfield. Maybe could have had it dragged back to him here, but the composure of Jada Silva. A really clever finish, a striker's finish. One back, high up the field. Here's De Silva, poked in to Atkinson. So comfortable high up the pitch, supporting his colleagues. Here's Semenyo, drives into the oh, box, flicked it, on. And Wells is onside to convert. Bristol City double their lead on the cusp of half-time. And he's at it again. It's on fire, isn't he? Hey. Slightest of touches just to deviate the shot from Antoine. Look at this power from Semenyo. Moves away from the defenders. Drives at goal. Wells knew exactly what he needed to do to find the back of the net. Shot from range, and how about that from a block from Andy King? 90 seconds left, Cleary battling now. This time Viner gets in the way, then closer. Drag back, shot from range, over oh. the crossbar, off the crossbar. Jada Silva gathers, and Bristol City living precariously, but bodies all over the floor, getting in front of the shots from range. Strike. Can't question Bristol City's commitment tonight. We'll see this shot again. Rattles the crossbar. Oh, fantastic memories. Let's hope for more of the same today. Right, still to come on Robins TV, Masengo and Bajic go head to head in something we've called Rate My Plate. Plus, all the action live from the Select Car Leasing Stadium for all our overseas viewers. All still to come after this short break. <laughs> Taking all the views, stepping on place, feeling the fear. I know you're feeling it in the air. Whole squad wearing all black, motivations looking real bad. Huh? We back to the bone, raising a fire alone. We ain't never needed nobody. Give me six feet, this is my party. Ain't got no feelings, we heartless. Take a pick us out of darkness. Blow up the spot, then we run it. Ready or not, here we coming. When the red, red robin comes ba ba bobbing along, along. The robins who this season have gone bobbing along right into the second division of the English Football League. The robins. in Bristol, you'll know that as the signature tune of Bristol City, the Robins. So we've got all this outdoor space here and it's perfect for companies to come in, whether they're small or large. So we cater for maybe a team of 12 or a team of 800. They can come here, have a really positive experience and be rewarded for all their hard work in the office or whatever industry they're from. As we've got such a big company, a lot of us don't see each other. Being able for the first time to get everyone out together in one place doing an activity together was great for team bonding and boosting their morale. We can um, hone in on specific skills such as communication, leadership, teamwork, resilience. Here we've got a 400 metre military assault course which is fantastic for team building. 
you want a morale booster, this is the place to come. Welcome back to Robins TV, ahead of the Royals versus the Robins at 3 o'clock for all our overseas viewers. You can always watch the first half an hour of every single edition of Robins TV for free on Facebook and YouTube as well. You're very welcome along. Right now, what happens when you put our two French superstars in a room with, well, the highest quality British cuisine? This is Rate My Plate. Hi, I'm Hanna Masengo. Hi, I'm Stefan Bajik. And this is Rate My Plate. Welcome, guys. Thank you. Rate My Plate. Han, this is plate number one. Please reveal what we're going to be eating. Hey. Now that hey. is a lovely pork pie. Pork Have pie. either of you had a pork pie before? <clears throat> I had a pie before, but not a pork pie. Okay, well, this is cold. All right. Have a try for us. It's a, it's a classic picnic dish. Picnic. Have a little bite of that. <laughs> it's nice, it's nice. <coughs> <laughs> That's not a good sign. Out of five, what do you reckon? Stefan, you don't look impressed. For me, it's... Two. Two out of five? Yes. Yeah. Same for you. I would say two, because I can see that the, the meat is not very good quality. <laughs> I think, and I don't know, I think it's a bad mix. This with jelly, jelly as well, mm. and meat. I don't know. That's a bad start, uh, but we have another plate. Uh, what do you reckon to these? I hope you're going to like these. Oh, uh, we'll see. Reveal, Han. <laughs> oh, it's on point here. Ah, see, so we've, got, yes. we've got Jaffa cakes. Yeah. I think I know. You've had these before? Uh, I think so. We are same in France. Yeah? Well, yeah. yes, yes. Same in France? Mm. Nice, there you go. Mm. Yeah, it's really good. Mm. Hey. Top. A little bit of um, orange. A little bit of orange, yeah. With yeah. chocolate. There was a big debate whether these were biscuits or cakes. I think it's cakes. It's gotta be, hasn't it? Because yeah. biscuits is a little bit more... Crunch. Yeah, crunch. Mm. Yes. No, that's cakes. got a seal of approval from you both. Out of five? Or um, I would say three and a half. Three and a half? Yeah. No, for me, I like this, so it's five. Five out of yes, five. Yes. Okay, plate number three. I will be surprised if you've ever had these before. Han, reveal plate number three. Ew. Do you know what, what is this? Are? What is that? That? Yeah. It's pork scratchings. What? Or pork what? rind. It is. <laughs> It's, have, a, have a bite of one. They're no, very no, popular. No, no, no. You need to tell us more. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> hey. I really don't know what this is. Very popular in the British pubs. Yeah. Um, these are pig skin fried. It's very crunchy, yeah. a little bit salty, but honestly, try it. I've had crackling then. before on a roast dinner. You first, bro. Oh. You first. It's good. Mm. Yeah, it's fine. Not bad? Yeah. Crispy. What do you reckon? Yes, mm, not bad. Mm. So like. these would be popular in the pub. A pint of something, a little pack of pork oh. scratchings. But Han, you said not too bad. Yeah, not too bad. No, it's better than what I think it was going to be. It doesn't look great and it yeah. doesn't smell great, but... I think I would say a three for me. Three? Yeah, okay. three. three. Stefan? Yes, yeah, same three. Oh no, not this. <laughs> not, not this! C'est quoi? Ah, tu vas voir. This is a classic. C'est quoi? Not this, please, because... If Stefan's ever had this before... Some of the guys eat this in the morning, and I tried to eat this once, <laughs> and it was disgusting. Oh. You ever had this before? I tried once. I tried once and... So plate number four is Marmite. <laughs> What is you that? Have a, so you Han, Han suggested having a little smell of yeah. the pot first. Smell, smell. No, sans ça d'abord. Smell first. <sighs> hey, that is... Strong. With this? Yes. No, no, no. Still far, so. 
Hey, that is. Well, give it a try. Have you ever had it though? Had yeah, it? I've had it, but the first time I tried this, I was like, English people are just crazy. Look at that. He's really going for it. Yeah, because I'm embracing the culture. Yeah, yeah, good man. And then a little bit more for Stefan. No, yeah, 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 yeah. no, no, good, good. He needs some. No, yeah, no, good, good, good. He's been here for no. <laughs> just three months, so. All right, tuck in, lads. Eating this in the morning. Go on. Ken Wilson. <coughs> Kane Wilson. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Go on, you can do it. Oh. Can I do that? Oh no, I can't do that. Oh, dude. Here you go, Stefan. There you go. Quick. <laughs> this is disgusting. Before I get you water, though, out of five. For me, zero. 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 This is zero. Oh. Oh. That is mm. not good on the Marmite. Mm. <laughs> and just so happens, just to, to, to balance it up, what I've got is some snails under here, James. And we're gonna... <laughs> Marmite fan or not? Mm. No. No? no I, I could tolerate it, but it's not something I'd pick. You see, that's one of the, you either love it or you hate it, but you're no. in the middle. Yeah, sitting on the fence on that one. <laughs> um, they both seem like amazing guys. When you're knocking about at the HPC, yeah. um, they both seem like they're up for fun. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and again, it's good to see everybody at HPC as well. So yeah, I think that's really important for us as a club. Yeah, the integration has is, is been really important. I've had a chat to, you know, both men's players and women's players, and actually to be able to integrate like that is, well, quite unique, first of all. But but second of all, I guess it means you uh, you share in the highs and the lows of each other's team. Yeah, it it's, it's really is that one club philosophy, which which I think is really, really important for, for everybody to see it. And, you know, we share in each other's successes and, you know, support each other on and off the field. And you have to put up with the likes of Scott Murray knocking around, challenging you to games of ping pong. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't had to do that yet, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure that could come at some point. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, back to today then. Uh, let's, I think we can actually now go to the Select Carlisi Stadium. There they are. Uh, what's going through the, the, the lads' minds at this point? What are they concentrating on as Paddy is uh, just sort of completing his, well, it's in a strange, strange position there, but completing his warm up? I think it's just for the players now is just making sure they have no unanswered questions in their minds. So, you know, that's what the staff will have done this morning, you know, in the maybe in the changing room just before, you know, they've come out for the warm up and just really make sure everybody knows what their individual roles are, mm -hmm. um, any threats that the opposition may pose and, and just really remove any doubts that they may have in terms of what might come in the next 90 minutes. Fitness is, you know, incredibly important and, and, you know, football has changed, hasn't it, over the years. I'm sure, you know, since your tenure in the game, actually the science part now has become so key, hasn't it? Yeah, it dictates so much of what we do as coaches, um, you know, in terms of players and their workload and, you know, how making sure you can get optimum performance from those players, which, you know, it's a huge part of the game now and it's something that, you know, is, a, is really, as you said, a really big change from when I first started coaching. So what do Bristol City have to do, James, to get all three points today, do you reckon? I think, again, really take that, that confidence out of the last game, be on the front foot, you know, attack this game early on. Um, as you said, Reading have had a couple of not great results as well. So I think really try and capitalise on that and get a foothold in the game really early on, whether that's ideally with a goal or, or even if that's just dominating possession and territorially, you know, kind of controlling the game. So I think that's the, the key now is to start the game really well. Great stuff. All right, James Moore from James. You'll hear his voice in commentary as well with Toby Osborne uh, in just a few moments' time. Of course, a packed out away end at the Select Car Leasing Stadium. So many Bristol City fans have made the trip down there. I'm sure we'll hear them in fine voice a little bit later on. Time to say goodbye to our viewers on Facebook and YouTube now. As ever, EFL regulations mean we can't show you the game. However, if you would like coverage, it's on the club's social channel or indeed you can log on to bcfc.co.uk and buy an audio pass.